Today, we are going to make models of colorful plastic buttons and a few variations. We will be modeling these from scratch and then render them using cycles. You can see here the final render we have done. These should be very easy to do and you can follow along with me to create yourselves. I am using Blender 2.93.9, but you should be able to use any version you like. The default cube is deleted using X, and a new circle object is added using the Add menu. In the Circle options, change number of vertices to 16 and radius to 0.1 meter. Use mouse wheel to zoom in, and use Tab or the menu to change to Edit mode. Use F to fill in the circle. Press I to insert. Repeat I to insert three more times. Use mouse alt left click to select the outer circle, and then control I to invert selection. Press numpad 1 to go to orthographic view. Use the left menu to select move tool, and move one point on the Z direction using the blue arrow. Press A to select all, and use the blue arrow to move all of the vertices up a little bit. Let's now add the mirror modifier. Make sure to select only the Z axis. Enable clipping on the modifier. Alt left click on the outer edge to select it. E to extrude, and constraint it on Z axis by pressing Z. Move mouse down to snap to the mirrored vertices. Alt click to select the inner edge, and control B to bevel. Do the same for the next edge, but use mouse wheel to add an extra set of vertices in the middle. Using numpad 7, go to top orthographic view. Select the four vertices using shift. Using S for scale, and adjust the position as shown. We will then add a bevel to the vertices with control shift B. Use mouse wheel to add extra vertices. Make sure the add-on loop tools is enabled. Press N or open the right side panel, and find loop tools in the edit option. Use the option circle to arrange the vertices in a circle. Press 3 or use menu to change to face selection mode. Press X to delete the faces. Press 1 or use menu to change to vertex selection mode. Use numpad 7 for top orthographic view, and use shift left mouse to select the circles. Press E to extrude, and Z to snap to Z axis. Move mouse down to snap to mirror. With numpad 7, go back to top orthographic view, and use shift left mouse to select the circles. With control B, add a bevel, and adjust for a smooth edge. Adjust the number of levels on the bevel with mouse wheel. Let's go back to object mode using tab key, or using the menu. In modifiers section, we are going to add a subdivision surface modifier to make the button look smooth. Set the levels to 3. Right click on the model, and set shade smooth. We are done with modeling the button. If you got something similar to what I have, give yourself a pat on the back for a job well done. In the next section, we are going to apply a material to the model, and try to make it look realistic. Go to the material properties, and use the browse material dropdown to select the material that was automatically created. If you do not see one, you can create a new material by clicking the new button. Set roughness to zero, and switch to viewport shading mode using the buttons on top right, so we can preview the applied material. Pick a color that you think will look good. Next switch to the shading tab. Zoom in so you can see the material applied really well. Using the Add menu, Add Input, Texture Coordinate. Add, Vector, Mapping. Add, Texture, Musgrave Texture. Add, Vector, Bump. Connect Object to Vector, Vector to Vector, Height to Height, and finally Normal to Normal is shown. In Musgrave node adjust until we get a detailed texture applied.
Lower the bump node strength so we get a very subtle effect. Adjust the roughness a little bit to see if this looks better. Next, we will use random option available in the object info node to apply different colors to the button variations we are going to create. For this, use the add menu and select object info. Use add menu again and select converter, color ramp. Connect random to fac of color ramp. Connect color to base color. In color ramp, add a few colors so we get some variations. This step is optional, but you can try, add, color, bright contrast, and connect the node between color ramp and the base color connection. Adjust and see if you like the effect. Our material is done, so let's go back to the layout tab to create a few different button types. Select the move tool on the left so the move arrows are visible. Shift D to duplicate, and use X to constrain placement of the duplicated object on the X axis. Drag mouse to place the clone just to the right side of the original object. Notice the new object gets a new color automatically applied. Go to the modifier properties, and add the cast modifier. Adjust the factor to create our first variation. Now duplicate again with Shift D, X, and place towards the right. Deselect Z axis on the modifier, adjust factor to get our second variation. Select our first object, Shift D, X, to duplicate and move along X axis. Go to modifier properties, add a cast modifier again, but this time change the shape to cylinder for our next variation. Select our first object, Shift D, Y, to duplicate and move along Y axis. Add the simple deform modifier, and select Stretch and Z adjust the factor to make it a bit bigger. Shift D, X, to duplicate again and move along X axis. Select Taper and adjust the factor. Shift D, X, to duplicate along X axis. Change the Taper factor to negative for another variation. Shift D, X, to duplicate along X axis. Select Stretch and adjust factor. This step is optional, but we can go back to the shading tab, and adjust colors some more. Here you can see me removing the brightness contrast node, and adding the hue saturation node. Each can provide different color effects. Once you are happy with the color selections, it's time for the last step, that is render the results.
To render, first we go back to the layout node. Then we add a plane using the add menu, and then adjust the z-axis so that it will not overlap with any of the buttons. In render properties, select cycles as the render engine. Set device to GPU, and enable render denoising. Next, we need to go to the default light in the scene and change it from point to spot. We also change the size X to 1 meter. In the view, enable camera to view. Change to viewport shading mode using the buttons on top right. Now press 0 in the keypad so we are looking through the camera, that is the camera perspective view. Frame the view as we like, so all the objects are framed, and at a good angle. We are almost done. To get the final render, use the render menu, and select render image. Wait while your computer does its work, and generate some good looking buttons. If you like this video, and want us to create more like this, please give us a like. Any feedback via comments are very welcome. See you in the next video.